In my 20 plus year career in the military, I was very fortunate to be able to shoot all kinds of weapon systems. Everything from heavy machine guns, to tank cannons, mortars, even guided missiles. But nothing was more enjoyable to me than actually shooting rockets. Because unlike all those other weapon systems which can be aided by various computers and sites, rockets are still untamed and it takes a little bit of skill to get some precision. So let's talk about how to get good. Speed raise, pound six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south and north, left in, right out. The following video is for entertainment purposes only. There will be no specific discussion about ranges, technical data, or aircraft survivability equipment, otherwise known as ASE. Questions of this nature will not be answered, and discussions will be deleted. Thanks. Alright everybody, welcome aboard the H-64D, and we're going to go ahead and get set up for our rockets. And uh, first thing we can do is go down to our weapons page and select rockets. And we can see that we've selected the rockets. We've got the inverse video, meaning that they've become solid as opposed to empty. So inverse video, we're still showing safe. Uh, our site, uh, since we're in a backseat, we really only have the one option right now is the site HMD. And we've got our rocket types over here. So we've got 32 of our point detonating and six of our illumination rockets. And we're set to fire one per impulse. We'll go ahead and change that to two. And we can just kind of take a look. We've got our acquisition source here is also says uh, set the tads and our laser spot tracker and laser rangefinder designator. We'll talk about that later. All right, so rockets, we are going to just uh, run through the symbology here. Now, some things are a little bit different because this is early access and things are still getting kind of worked out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and try to waz the rockets. And it's not going to let us. So we're going to go to ground override and we're just going to go to armed. And now we're going to waz the rockets on our cyclic. It's going to tell us type select because we haven't selected a type. So we'll go ahead and pick those PDs. And now we've got our symbology. So we've got our rocket steering cue. And uh, you can see that it's moving based on my head. And that is because our sight is our HMD. If we were using the TADs, then it would be changing based on the TADs. So let's talk a little bit about why it's moving around and why it is not a CCIP. So this is not telling us that the rockets are going to land there or there or there. All this is is a steering cue. This is something that's telling you what you need to do to be successful with the rockets. Uh, since our sight is our HMD, that means the crosshair is our sight. So in this case, we are trying to shoot those trucks right there. And as you can see, that we've got our head tracker up here uh, on the top. And that is essentially center line of the aircraft, meaning the rockets, of course, being center line weapon systems are going to come right off the aircraft they're going to go basically in that direction so the head tracker is there to give us some sort of frame of reference of what the front of the aircraft actually is so as we're looking left of the aircraft well you can see that the steering cue is telling us hey you need to come left so if we go to the right and look at this hangar and we can tell that the steering cue is telling us hey if you want to shoot this tank this uh, hangar you're going to need to come right and inversely if we were trying to shoot that tree that just happens to be right off the front the steering cue is telling us you are lined up. So that's talking about the yaw, and that's the one thing that we control. The other thing that is controlled is the range, the articulation of the rockets, and that is handled uh, mainly by the aircraft. So right now the aircraft thinks that we are trying to shoot at 1,500 meters. You can see here our manual range. This is our default for the pilot seat is at 1,500, and the front seat is 3,000 meters. And we can change that to whatever number we want, uh, or we can just go to hit A, enter, and now you can see that it is set to auto range. And you can see there 0.1, essentially because I'm looking straight down. And as I move my head, that range will change. Again, the aircraft is trying to calculate based on its altitude, which is zero right now, and the look down angle that the pilot is making. And it's trying to make those adjustments, so it's gonna be a pretty rapid adjustment just because we're at uh, zero feet. Uh, but as I look up, that range is gonna change dramatically to f uh, 50 kilometers. And if we just, just do a little bit more, you can see it kind of jump into there to the point too. So it's trying to do those calculations for us. And the rockets are trying to make those adjustments for us as well. So regardless of which side of the aircraft I'm looking, the aircraft is trying to make those range adjustments for me. So well, let's look outside at the rocket pod and we'll just kind of raise our head a little bit and we can see that the pods are moving and they're moving in response to my head going up for a higher range 
and down for a lower range. So that's the articulation in action, and that's what the aircraft's going to be doing for you in flight. Now, the front seater has the same sort of control with his head, but also with the TADs. And as he moves the TADs, if he has lost the rockets and he has uh, selected TADs as the sight source, then the rockets will articulate based off of that and also give steering cues based on where that line of sight is looking. So we'll go ahead and save the aircraft and we're going to head on out to the range and we'll put some of this into action. All right, we're here at the range. Uh, we've got targets kind of scattered out in front of us between the waypoints one and two. So we'll go ahead and uh, arm the aircraft. We're armed. We're going to go ahead and was the rockets. And right now we've got, again, our PDs selected. Our site is our HMD. And we're just going to look for targets. And again, based on where I'm looking, that steering cue is going to tell me that I need to move left or right. And then based on my head motion, it's trying to calculate that range for us. So we've got a target right there off the nose. So what I'm going to try to do is maintain my head line of sight on that and bring the aircraft over to the right. Keep those lined up and fire. So as you can see, rockets are not an exact science. They're going to kind of go where they want. It's kind of like shooting a big bottle rocket. Uh, but with the articulation, you don't have to put the aircraft into any sort of crazy maneuvering. Uh, you can just kind of keep going the same speed, same altitude if you want. Uh, or you can kind of dip down and make some adjustments with your head. But you don't actually have to point the aircraft at the target. So we'll roll in on uh, one more target that way, and it will change to uh, another technique. All right, so this one I'm going to shoot that further out target. Again, getting lined up and making my adjustments. Now, as you can see, it can get a little muddled. There's a lot of stuff moving around in your eye, and it's all the same color, and it's all the same shape. Uh, this is, to be honest with you, my least favorite technique for firing rockets uh, independently, meaning not cooperatively, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but it is a technique that once you get uh, good at, uh, you'll find that it can be actually pretty accurate. So just keep practicing and uh, don't overthink the trim. You know, rockets, again, they're going to kind of do what they want to do. Uh, your, that steering cue is just kind of getting you in the ballpark. Another technique, of course, is the fact that your head tracker is lined up with the aircraft. So as long as you've got that over the target or slightly near, uh, then the aircraft is going to be pointing in the right direction. And your rockets are going to get pretty close. Again, rockets are an area effect weapon. Uh, you're not really intended to get a first round hit. Uh, but if you do, then congratulations. All right, now some people question the wisdom of the articulating rockets, and I'll be honest with you that when I first started flying Apaches, it really confused me and uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, but there is a, a method to the madness. There is a reason for it. And that reason, again, when you kind of go back to why was the Apache made and what was it made to do, uh, it really is kind of made uh, originally to do a lot of hovering fire uh, in a defensive type position. And so the articulating rockets allow you to shoot rockets at varying ranges without putting the aircraft into a sort of a crazy nose high or nose low attitude. So we're going to get set up here and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to go ahead and go to hover mode on our symbology and uh, we can see our targets way out there. And again, when we do cooperative, this will make a little bit more sense. It's a little bit hard to do single pilot, uh, but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea. So uh, once again, as I'm looking at different targets, uh, the range source is going to change, which means the pods are going to change. So I'm at a uh, a terrible hover right now. I'm trying to get stable and also look at the targets. Uh, but the pods are articulating for me, so as long as I get lined up on the target, then we should be able to fire. So we're going to bring the aircraft to the right just a little bit, get lined up. And you can see that the range was good. I'm a little off, kind of slinging them around, trying to get uh, my pedals adjusted properly, but. Uh, it does allow you to fire at different ranges. So if I want to shoot at that target there in the tree line, you can see that the pods have made an adjustment. I haven't really changed my location, but the rockets are now firing further away. And I can kind of walk them in. And those adjustments are being made for me. 
So that is the reason that we have the articulating rocket pods. And again, once we shoot cooperatively, this will make a lot more sense. Now, for those of you who do not like the symbology or you just kind of want to go to old school method, uh, which I can appreciate, uh, you can use the ground stow method. Now, this version of the aircraft does not have a fixed mode like the newer Apaches do. Uh, that software came along a little bit later, uh, but we do have what's called ground stow. So we'll go to the weapons page. We can see the util. We'll click on that. And then right down there at uh, R5 is ground stow. We'll click that on. So what that's doing is it's stowing the pods into a position uh, that typically it happens when the aircraft lands. The pods will lock into a position that allows the ground crew to more easily load the rockets. Uh, so it's done that for us. So uh, the rocket pods are not going to change. I'm going to go ahead and go back to automatic mode here. And we'll see that the pods are actually not going to make any articulation because they are stowed ground stow. And you can see that we do have a rocket steering cue, but it has a broken line there. Uh, this is, again, not a CCIP, so this is really not helping us with any sort of range. All it is doing is helping us, again, line the aircraft up with whatever we're shooting at. So here you got to use a little bit of Kentucky windage, kind of figure out what you think uh, looks right for the rockets, and then engage. So we've got this target here. I'm going to shoot for what I think looks right. And then we'll just see what happens. So, short. And we'll just make some adjustments. So again, this is a uh, less precise technique, but it is a little bit easier to do uh, once you practice with it. And there's not a whole lot of trying to keep your head still. So... Uh, this is probably one of those most emotional uh, conversations with uh, Apache pilots of what techniques they like the best. So just kind of play around with it and see what you like. All right, so we've talked about how to fire the rockets independently. Now we're going to talk about cooperative engagement. And cooperative uh, is basically just that. It's cooperative. Everyone on board gets to play. So the, the front seater, the, right, the co-pilot gunner, forward. is going to waz the rockets. And he is going to be the primary aiming guy. He's going to have the sight using the TADs. And the back seater is also going to waz rockets. And we are going to be in a cooperative mode. And the back seater is going to fire based off of the aiming of the front seater. So uh, we'll go through a demonstration here with my buddy Brad, who's another member of the SME team. And we'll kind of show how it goes, and then we'll uh, talk about it. That should be good. And we just engage that close one right off the nose. And okay. adjust to target two. Target three is closest one in, slaving two. Slaved on it. Lots of rockets. There we go. So match and shoot. <clears throat> Roger. 1,500 meters. Firing. I think it's coming to the right. That, yep. I'd right, hit that tree. Uh, that was. Ooh, just a little long. I'm gonna correct down just a little bit. Yep. Still long. All right. So about 100 meters long. I'm just gonna go man range. So I'm gonna punch in the 18 20. <laughs> hit the tree. <laughs> All right, we'll dial it down to 1,600. Match. That one looks good. Might yep. be a little long. A little short. It's actually short. All right, 1,700. Match two. Yep, sure. that's on. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Oh yeah. Got him. Fire perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and match and shoot. Roger. I gotta come forward a little more. What's the range? Uh, five four. Okay. Yeah, I gotta. Four. I gotta pile on the. Okay. Forward, come forward, come forward. There we're we go. at five two. Match and shoot. Two good rockets. 
Oh, sensing. Ooh, nice. All right, on yeah, target. Yeah. Match and shoot. That's good effects. Four good rockets. Roger, sensing. Nice. All right, so as you can see, the front seater is aligning the sight, the TADs in this case, uh, with the target and getting range information with the laser. The back seater is going to receive all this information and all he's got to do is line up the aircraft. Then uh, once he's lined up, is go ahead and fires the rockets, uh, lets the front seater know that he's fired, how many he's fired. And then what the front seater is gonna do is he's gonna announce sensing. So uh, he's going to uh, go back uh, to a medium field of view and look for those rockets, see where they land, and then he's going to make adjustments. Because again, rockets are not guided, at least these types of rockets are not guided. And they're going to go where they want to go, and you're going to have to make some adjustments. And it could be uh, based on wind, it could just be based on the pilot made uh, an error, uh, it could be an error in the laser range finding. Uh, so you're just going to make some adjustments with the sight, and then uh, tell the, uh, the backseater to fire again. And that command is match and shoot, so you're telling him to match up with your target and shoot when he's ready. So once you say match and shoot, uh, just be uh, continue to observe and keep the sight on the target. And then when he fires, go ahead and announce sensing and look for those rounds, make adjustments. Pairs, between yeah. pairs, whatever. Yeah, that's the DCS, we do what we want. The first right. ones were good, the others were off to the right. All right guys, so as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat when it comes to rockets. And of course, once the FZR comes on board later on in the uh, Apache build, that'll give us another way to uh, target things. So just play around with it. Uh, of course, uh, get a buddy, do some cooperative engagements, and the George AI can actually do some cooperative. Uh, but it's never going to be as good as uh, having someone there in the front seat or back seat with you and working through those problems. It's a, a lot of fun. It's going to give you some different options. And uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it and have a lot of fun with it. Rockets are an absolute just awesome thing to shoot in real life. And uh, I enjoy shooting them in DCS too. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you're enjoying the Apache. And we'll talk to you later. Take care. 100% accurate uh, with regards to your nose position. So we'll go ahead and put what makes sense to me from a nose position. And we'll shoot. And it was actually a pretty good shot. So uh, 